Hey everyone, I'm Nate Lambert with Red River, and today we're going to take a look at uh, website certificates and how to validate what is a true secure website when you're browsing the net, uh, and also maybe what to look for when you have a, an unsecured website. All right, so first off, when talking about uh, website security, we have to talk just quickly about um, what secure TLS websites are. Um, how certificates work and kind of what they do. Uh, we'll keep it pretty high level for today, but uh, it's good to give you guys the context for what those are uh, before we start talking about maybe some of the ways that websites uh, aren't properly secured when you're out on the web. Um, so first things first, it's important to remember that not every HTTP or HTTPS website um, has the same functionality. Um, so you may be using websites day in and day out that aren't um, properly secured using certificates. And, and what that means is your traffic to that website isn't properly encrypted. Uh, but that's OK if it's a website where you're not entering in personal information, right? So if you're going to uh, a news location, um, or something of that sorts where you're not putting in personal information, you're just sort of taking information in. Um, while you would still like all the websites you're going to to be secured, it's unreasonable to think that every single website on the internet is going to be using um, HTTPS and ultimately using TLS encryption to secure it. Um, however, where this really comes into play is when you're talking about uh, websites that you're going through for banking or um, e-commerce where you're entering personal information, credit card information, um, anything that you want to keep secure. Uh, what we really depend on more than we even know um, is the certificate infrastructure of the internet. And that's where we want to start talking about what that means, uh, the difference between HTTP, HTTPS, um, as well as really start to give you a little context around some of those error messages you'll see. Um, we've all seen them, right? Uh, you'll get like a certificate warning for a website and it asks you to proceed if you'd like, uh, but the website is unsecure. Um, I'll show you a couple examples in this video of what those are um, and potentially, you know, what you should be looking for when that happens. Um, so first things first, we'll start here at the Red River website, which uh, I'm pleased and happy to say is both uh, HTTPS secure website uh, and has a valid certificate. So um, right now we're using Google Chrome and for Google Chrome users, uh, this will be applicable. There are some minor variations if you're using something like um, Internet Explorer or the new Microsoft Edge um, or Firefox, but relatively speaking, the URL taskbar um, it's pretty similar, but for now, everything will be really applicable to our Google Chrome users. Uh, so as you can see, it's a pretty normal website, right? Nice and uh, professional looking. It's great. Uh, be sure to check out redriver.com once you're done on the YouTube page. Uh, but you'll notice up here at the top left, we've got this lock symbol. Um, and if I hover over that, it'll ask me to view site information. Um, for the purposes of this, we're going to take a look in there just to kind of add some additional context to this, this conversation. Um, so when I click on that, it'll tell me that, OK, my connection to redriver.com is secure. Um, it also says there's some cookies that potentially are being used. Um, just as a quick disclaimer, cookies kind of got a bad rep. You know, years ago, everyone remembers people talking about cookies, slowing their computer down. Uh, nowadays, it, it's a little bit of a, a misnomer, right? Those are really uh, being used for all the different integrations that websites have nowadays. So I wouldn't be super alarmed by that. Just as a quick uh, aside, um, you're going to see those in use in a lot of your websites that you travel to. But what we're really concerned with here is the connection security. Um, so if I hover over that and it says I can show some more connection details, I'm going to click on that. And it's going to tell me that uh, this connection is secure. And as we just discussed, that means passwords, credit card numbers are private uh, when I'm sending information to this website. Uh, now, just because Red River uh, isn't operating probably with like an e-commerce front end or they're probably not taking in a lot of sensitive information, um, it's still good to know that if I was to submit uh, maybe something into the you know, philanthropic um, edge of the website and uh, maybe for volunteering or something, right? Like that information would still be secured, which is great. And the other thing we want to talk about quickly is just the certificate um, that we're using. So the way that this actually occurs is through a sequence of public and private uh, keys. Um, we have probably saved that for a conversation for another day. But what I really want to know right now is just that the certificate is valid. Uh, and when I click on that, I get kind of this complex set of information, right? But what this tells me is that uh, the certificate that Red River is using to properly encrypt my traffic um, was issued to redriver.com, which is the domain we're going through the website. I was issued by Digicert, which is a, a well-known and trusted certificate authority. Um, and it was valid through 
at least the current date, right? So a Red River certificate is valid until May of next year, at which point it'll be renewed. Um, but this is all the information that I want to see. And you don't really need to get into the habit of looking this stuff up when you're going to websites. Uh, just this little symbol is good enough, right? But uh, it's good to understand kind of how that's actually working. And what that means is that it's a secured encrypted connection to this website. And that's doing that using certificates uh, that are valid and from a trusted source. So let's talk quickly about what to do if you have a website uh, that doesn't meet that criteria. Um, so Bad SSL is just a tool that we're going to use here uh, hosted through GitHub that gives me a couple examples. Uh, this is going to simulate what you would experience if you go to uh, a website where there is a bad certificate or where you have an untrusted root. And I'm going to talk through a couple of these examples here. Um, <clears throat> the reason that I'm using this bad SSL tool uh, as opposed to Red River, like I did in the example, is that predominantly websites should be using valid certificates, right? So it's pretty challenging for me recording this video to go find a bad website and just find one where the certificate is either um, not being signed correctly, it's expired, uh, or it's untrusted, which are the three we're going to cover today. Um, I shouldn't be finding those, right? If I go to Facebook or Bank of America or wherever, um, those certificates should be up to date because they're a critical part of the security um, of the internet. So um, I'm going to use a tool like this to kind of show as an example. But what's important to remember is that any of these certificate errors that we're going to talk through, uh, if you see one of those on a website that you're using that isn't a test website like bad SSL, uh, that's where you want to kind of have that heightened sense of, you know, suspicion around why am I getting this error? What does it mean? And don't just click through those things that pop up, which is, you know, a habit we all fall into. Uh, you click a website, it pops up and gives you this error. You don't totally understand what it means so something about a certificate and you just go meh no thanks you click through it and then you could be more vulnerable that way uh, <clears throat> so first off the most common one you're going to experience is going to be expired certificates um, so you see that your connection is no longer private and the reason being is that that certificate you're using is a is a, an expired certificate um, so what I'm going to see here is I'm just going to ask me whether I either want to advance and move on or I want to go back to safety, right? This is that screen we've all seen and we all click through. Um, so nice thing now is browsers do a really great job of kind of letting you know what the issue is, but we're all pretty common. You know, we can just click advance and we'll move forward without being worried about it. Uh, that's not what you want to do, right? You want to kind of make note of that and say, well, what's going on here? I've got this not secure logo at the top. Um, I've got this obvious clear um, kind of warning logo from Google. Uh, and if I click on, you know, hide advance, then I'm able to basically go through and uh, it, it'll tell me what the error was. So in this instance, it's that, you know, it could not, the server I'm connecting to, right? So in this case, badssl.com could not provide a, an up-to-date valid security certificate. So the website I'm trying to connect to in this instance, uh, badssl.com, doesn't have a valid certificate. It's expired, and that's not a good thing. So I don't want to go there. So if I click back to safety, it takes me back to where I went to before. Now, if this is something where it's a, a website you need, like a large organization, I would try back in a little bit. Most of the time, expired certificates get remedied pretty quickly if it's a large organization. Uh, if it's a smaller organization, you know, it may be just something you have to make note of um, and contact that company and say, look, your website's untrusted, so I, I can't purchase something through your e-commerce space because uh, I'm not going to put my credit card information into an untrusted site. Um, that one tends to be a little bit less malicious, right? That tends to be something that could just happen where something expires. It's not good, uh, but it happens. So, you know, that one, I wouldn't necessarily think that there's suddenly uh, like a threat. It's just probably something that's been overlooked and you still wouldn't want to use that website until the certificates have been updated. Um, there's a couple situations where you want to really be a little bit on the lookout, right? And that's where uh, when we went through with these examples, you can see that the browser is giving you some information that most of us just kind of click through. Uh, but that's where you now, after seeing this video, can be a little bit more of an informed user. And you can actually read through and maybe take a look at what's going on with that website. So uh, one of the big ones is an untrusted route, uh, which I'll explain here in a second. So let's pull up that example. So when I have an untrusted route, what that means is that um, the certificate authority that we're using, if you remember from the Red River uh, site, we're using DigiCert. And uh, there are a couple different large companies that are really well trusted. They're authorized uh, certificate authorities. Um, and those are what they call a trusted route authority, which means whoever signed the certificate and authorized the certificate's production is a trusted entity. Uh, the nice thing nowadays is that all your browsers have that integrated. So it has a list of trusted certificate authorities that it knows, DigiCert being one of them. 
them. Uh, but the problem is, is that theoretically you could have anyone produce a certificate for a website. So um, I could run Nate Lambert Enterprises and produce a certificate uh, for my own website. And when you went to your computer and, and tried to browse to it, your computer knows nothing about Nate Lambert Enterprises. So your computer is inherently going to be suspicious of that certificate authority. And what you're going to see here is you're going to get the same error at the top, right? Your connection is not private. So credit card information, passwords, be very weary. But what you're going to see here is that the error return is that the authority is invalid, which is different than when we saw the expiration. So again, expiration, not inherently malicious, a little bit uh, of an oversight potentially. But when we have an invalid uh, certificate authority, that means that my computer doesn't know who's trusting this website. So therefore, my computer is not trusting that website. Uh, when you see something like this, if this is on a website that you're using frequently and all of a sudden this pops up, you want to be extra cautious when using a website of this type. Uh, I can still advance if I'd like to. It's going to make me, you know, uh, kind of confirm Google wants to protect me from myself. It says, look, this website can't provide this proper certificate. We'd really suggest that you don't use that. Um, and if you really want to, you can move forward. But if you go to that website, you want to be really certain not to put in any sensitive information, because as we've now learned, uh, none of that information is being secured. And anyone could potentially be in the middle of that transaction, gathering your passwords and all your information. Uh, so in that instance, I'd want to go back to safety. I'd want to move back away from that website and make note. Um, the self-signed certificate is the third one we're going to talk about quickly. Uh, that's another one you're very commonly going to see with maybe private companies or uh, internal websites like at your office. Uh, maybe there's a certificate that's been self-signed that doesn't get recognized by your browser. Uh, it's still really good to remain vigilant and understand why you're getting an alert. Uh, most of the time, if you have a, a website at your office or something that you're trying to use and all of a sudden you see this popping up, uh, you still want to be a little bit uh, vigilant, right, when you're using uh, that browser because there's a chance that there's something malicious going on on your local network. Um, so if you see something where it says there's a bad self-signed certificate, make note of it, uh, follow your corporate policy for, you know, alerting your internal IT, uh, and by and large, try to go back to safety until you've had that remedied, or you can be really, really confident that that website is secure, uh, which is ultimately what we want, right, to keep our traffic secure. Um, so that's all we're going to cover today for certificates. Uh, I know it's a little bit technical, but by and large, it's something really important and it's something you don't have to deal with a lot, um, but it is a key part of our internet ecosystem. So uh, that's all we have today. Maybe we'll have a little more in the future. And that's all the time we have today uh, talking about certificate authorities and how to be secure when browsing the internet. Uh, thanks for coming by the YouTube channel. Be sure to like, rate, review, subscribe, uh, and come on back next time.